Hello and welcome to NJ Biz Conversations. I'm your host, Jeff Kanaj. My guest today is Jim Breach. He is the president of Upfield, which is a food producer with U.S. headquarters in Hackensack. Jim, welcome. Thank you for having me, Jeff. Thanks for taking the time to join me. I appreciate it. Um, uh, a lot, some of our viewers may not have heard of Upfield, but it has a long history, I'm told. Uh, the company can trace its lineage back to the invention of margarine in the 19th century. And I think a lot of viewers may have either country crock or I can't believe it's not butter or both in their refrigerators. I hope those so. Are your, those, are your, <laughs> those are your products. What else should viewers know about Upfield? Tell us a little bit about the company. As, yeah. As, as, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Um, so Upfield is a company we started in 2018 uh, with the acquisition um, of the brands by KKR. Um, and as you noted, uh, in the U.S., our brands were best known by our brands, Country Crock, and I can't believe it's not butter, um, and Imperial. So we started in uh, as a company, a uh, standalone company in 2018. Um, in 2020, we actually added uh, a brand called Violife to our portfolio. So uh, they were primarily at that point in time in the uh, uh, in the non-dairy cheese business. Um, and so, uh, and so, yeah, so we, we started in 2018 We're uh, were and are the, uh, the largest, uh, uh, plant-based food company in the world. Um, and it's been, uh, it's been a heck of a journey for the last six years. Okay. Well, that sounds interesting. Now you were a part of Unilever, um, which is obviously a multinational conglomerate. You're yeah. now independent, as you said, backed by KKR. Um, yeah. what's, what was, uh, what, what's been the transition like and how is it going so far? Listen, the transition's been fantastic. What I uh, what I liked about joining the business when I joined the business is KKR um, really had a vision for the business to become this uh, this plant based uh, food company and really make a difference in the world around uh, around plant based and non dairy foods. Um, since we've been uh, you know since we've been separated from the business and and under KKR's tutelage. Um, we've invested a lot of money, both globally and and here in the U.S. Um, in our manufacturing facilities, our largest manufacturing facility uh, is in Kansas City. Our only U.S. manufacturing facility is uh, is in Kansas City. We've invested okay. in uh, in capital down there. Um, I think more importantly, we've invested as a company in uh, in our R and D uh, capabilities. We uh, we just opened um, recently a fifty million dollar um, research and development facility in the Netherlands. Um, that's really become the hub. The, the area in the Netherlands we open it um, is known as the Silicon Valley of food. And so it's a very well-known global area for both food companies and tech companies to come together and think about what the future of food can look like. Um, so we invested in uh, in that and we've invested in a lot of innovation. And so it's been really good to uh, uh, to be um, you know part of Upfield, to be investing in the future of food and be investing in where we're trying to take plant-based and non-dairy. Okay, well, a couple of things I'm going to get into a little bit more about that. But first, I want to talk about plant-based food, which yeah. is a big, big thing now and has been growing over over time. I'm, I'm guessing that you're riding a, a pretty nice crest right now in terms of uh, consumer, uh, what, what consumers really are looking for these days. Yeah, we are. You know, it's funny because, uh, you know, what plant-based foods have been around for obviously a very long time. And I think what's been great about uh um sort of the resurgence or the or the 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 big change in growth for plant-based foods has really been in a couple of areas one's the technology um we know that consumers um in general aren't willing to compromise on food right they want products that taste good and perform well and have great mouthfeel and things like that and the technology um in the plant-based food business and for upfield has really started to close the gap between the plant-based version and the dairy version of those uh, of those products um, also, I think what's really been helpful, quite frankly, is information. I think as more and more information and there's more transparency for consumers about the dairy industry um, and the plant-based food products that are available, um, it's made it easier for consumers to really do their research and understand um, the products that are available and uh, and the way that they perform for consumers and what they're expecting. And so, so it's really been you know it's really been great. We've been um, we've been growing. We've enjoyed the growth. Um, and and we see plant based and non dairy as a uh, as as a uh, continuing evolution for consumers. Okay, I, I mean there are plant there are now plant based sections in in, in big supermarkets that where yeah. you, you want plant based foods, you know where to go. They're big exactly. signs. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and, Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say, I mean, you know, I think what's what's been great for, you know, as we work with our retailer partners and we work with, uh, you know, our food service partners as well, is they're also recognizing, right, plant-based is a, is a big change for consumers. Um, the fact of the matter is, is, is from an environmental sustainability perspective, you know, I can only speak to our products, but our products use 75% less resources to manufacture than their dairy counterparts, right? Um, and that's important to consumers 
but the most important thing to consumers is the products taste good and work well. Right. Okay. And so that's, that's, I think, been the biggest change for us in our, in our growth trajectory. Okay. Now, now one of the other things along those same lines is reducing the amount of plastics that you use. I'm imagining that goes into the sort of the same consumer expectations. Consumers are, are more interested in, in sort of sustainable, more environmentally friendly products. Is that, is that part of what your thinking was there? Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, we've, we've made a commitment to, uh, uh, to move out of plastics as soon as we can and as safely, as safely as we possibly can. Um, we think it's an important part of uh, of our journey as a uh, as a company, and we you know we're there's a lot of technolo technological challenges, of course, associated with that. Um, but we're working with a lot of uh, of tech companies to figure out our best path forward and getting out of plastic and moving into something that's far more sustainable. Okay. Uh, now you mentioned uh, the, the the facility in the Silicon Valley of food. Is that the food science center that, that you yes. opened? Yes. Yeah. So, so can you talk talk a little bit about that? Tell me a little bit about that and what, what role that plays in the company. How are you using yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think, um, first of all, we've got the best scientists on the planet um, working in uh, working in our industry on uh, on a lot of the challenges that we're working our way towards, right? Um, the as I, as I mentioned earlier, what consumers are looking for in food products are food products that taste good, um, are nutritious, are delicious, make great food products. Um, and what our science center in, in Wageningen does is it takes what the consumer needs are and applies science um, and technology to them to make sure that we're driving great tasting food products, right? The fact of the matter is, is the consumers, if we do our jobs the right way, um, appreciate what's going on in our food science center, but never never really feel it or see it because what we're all, the only thing that those scientists are doing is working day in and day out with, um, with, them, uh, with uh, uh, the resources that they have, with the tech companies that we partner with, um, and with uh, uh, and also with uh, institutions and NGOs to make sure that we're driving not just a great um, portfolio of products taste good and and uh, and work well, um, but also continue to do things like simpler ingredients, cleaner ingredient decks, um, things that we know consumers are looking for. Okay, and I also understand you have a a, a test kitchen in Hackensack. Is that right? Yeah, we do. It's uh, uh, as part of our office here in uh, in Hackensack. We built a test kitchen. Um, it's really for two reasons. One, it's uh, you know most of our products are uh, are not products that you immediately consume. They're products that are used as ingredients or as toppings for baking and cooking and spreading, barbecuing and things like that. And so, what's really important for us is to make sure that we've got great recipes and great recipe okay. ideas um, for consumers to figure out how to uh, how to you know best use our products. And so. Our test kitchen isn't just for testing our products, but it's working with our chefs on recipe development. Um, we bring um, retailers and we bring um, food service operators in to work uh, collaboratively on recipes as well. So it's really sort of our North American hub for, um, you know, for our relationship with retailers and consumers and, uh, and food service operators. Okay, that's what I was, I was curious as the kind of work that was going on there and how it plays into the Food Science Center and, and the rest of everything you're doing. So that, yeah. that makes perfect sense. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, you also mentioned uh, the facility in Kansas. Uh, as as we go through your 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 program here, yeah. um, what what was the thinking there, and and, and what happens at, at that facility? Yeah. So our our, our plant in Kansas is uh, is so ninety five percent of the products we sell in the in uh, the U S are actually manufactured in the U S. and most of them are made out of our uh, um, out of our uh, facility in uh, in Kansas. Um, we uh, we inherited that facility as we uh, as we moved um, you know as KKR bought the business uh, we inherited that facility. Um, we've invested um, a little over a hundred million dollars in uh, in improvement in that facility so that we can continue to sort of you know keep in trends with what I was discussing around you know simple ingredients products that taste great and look great. Um, so we manufacture most of our spreads products there. Our country crock and I can't believe it's not butter and imperial. Okay. Um, both the tub products and the uh, and the sticks products. Okay. Um, I, I'd, I'd like to uh, broaden the discussion out a little bit and ask yeah. uh, what it's like doing business in New Jersey. Um, we yeah. hear a lot about that. I mean, the, the state likes to promote itself as, as being business friendly and, and with yeah. a lot of, you know, a, 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 or a educated, highly skilled workforce, close transportation infrastructure, proximity, yeah. to large markets, all those things are advantages. How is it working out for you now? Yeah, listen, I think it's working out for us really well. We've got uh, a little over 120 people that work at our office here in uh, okay. in Hackensack. And, you know, what, what I have most enjoyed about uh, about our relationship with New Jersey and our uh, and our facility in Hackensack is just access to the talent. Um, you know, we have there's obviously a lot of very talented individuals around here. 
Um, we've got all of our multiple uh, multiple disciplines that work out of here, whether it's marketing, sales, finance, supply chain, um, human resources, you name it, insights and insights development. Um, and we just find that when we have an opening and or when we're growing and we're adding roles um, here, we're just getting absolutely amazing talent. And so, uh, you know, so um, whether it's the whether it's the network of universities that are around the area or the fact that, you know, this entire area is a magnet for talent, um, that that's just been one of a big win for us is, uh, is our talent portfolio. OK, well, well, uh, I'm, the state will be in, in, in touch, I'm sure, <laughs> they get an endorsement from you. And finally, I'm curious about your assessment overall of of. Of what the market has looked like, we mentioned. I mentioned that the, at the top, the, the the consumer sentiment. That's yeah. a that's a long standing trend toward more healthier foods. Yeah, um, it was accelerated during the pandemic when people had to eat at home, and we're we're trying to to to, to produce healthier, more uh, more more tastier um, and and healthier foods. How do you see that 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 kind of how do you see that market developing? Is that is there are is is there room to still room to grow there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, listen, we know that the consumer, the consumer has been on an interesting journey, right? I mean, since, since 2020 with COVID and and uh, uh, the impact of that on their lives, both personally and professionally, we know that, um, you know, there's been supply chain challenges since then. Um, and then obviously some, uh, uh, some of the inflation that we saw that entered our marketplace. And we know that our consumers are, uh, you know, feeling the challenge. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I've been in the industry for a long time, um, a little over 35 years. And, you know, my my belief is, is that the most street smart person on the face of the planet is a mother of four who's trying to feed her family, right? Mm -hmm. You, she is the smartest person on the planet. And uh, and she's going to figure out how to feed her family, regardless of the circumstances that, um, uh, that she finds herself in, whether it's, you know, good or bad. And so, um, you know, I think part of the challenge that, that we face in the industry is making sure that we continue to offer great tasting products at reasonable prices, the right pack sizes, the right price, you know, uh, uh, points for, for her to be able to feed her family. And that applies to our, that applies to the business that I'm in on, you know, on, on non-dairy plant-based, um, you know, we know that the consumers, um, when she is making a meal for her family, um, you know, she wants, she wants to be um, feeding them great products um, that are nutritious and meet their nutritional needs and, you know, whether that's, you know, for whoever it is in the family, right? And so, you know, so plant-based and non-dairy is going to continue to play a huge role. Um, we are, in general, healthier than the dairy alternative. We are, in general, less expensive than the dairy alternative. And so we think we're going to play a huge role for consumers, irrespective of socio uh, economics um, situation, whether, you know, very affluent to people that are, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. Our portfolio is designed to speak to all of those consumers. Um, and we'd like to think that we're not asking them to compromise when uh, we, we know that we're not asking them to compromise when they move from a dairy to a non-dairy alternative. Okay. And a lot of folks I, I, I talk to uh, seem to be fairly confident about where the economy is going. It sounds like you, you might, you, your company might be insulated for a little bit from, from some of the ups and downs, but um, for the rest of the year and into next year, you're, you're feeling like consumer spending is going to hold up. Yeah, I think in general, the food industry is, uh, um, you know, I mean, listen, my father grew up in the food industry and one of his favorite phrases was, you know, the food industry is fairly insulated just simply because, you know, people have to eat. Have to eat like, right. Everything else is sort of discretionary, um, right. but people have to eat. And so, you know, I think, uh, you know, we know that there are other pressures for consumers um, on their pocketbook, energy, um, education, their costs, things like that. Um, you know, all these things, I think, weigh on consumers and the choices that they're making day in and day out. We know that they're spending more as a percentage of their uh, of their paycheck is going to food. And so we feel a real obligation to make sure that, the you know, that, that when they're buying the foods that they're buying, um, when they're buying country crocker, I can't believe it's not butter or imperial or by life. They're getting an absolutely fantastic product at a really great value. And so, you know, I think that um, while inflation seems to be uh, coming down, it's not deflation. Um, right. It's just that inflation is cooling down, and I think that we're going to see consumers continuing to make trade-offs um, on what they what they're purchasing, and um, even within the food industry, what they're purchasing and where they're purchasing it. And we think that we're in a great position to meet those needs, um, regardless of where they are in their journey. Okay, well, that's a good place to leave it then. Thank you very much, Jim Breach, president of Upfield in in Hackensack in the Netherlands. Thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate. Yeah, it. thanks, Thank Jeff. Thanks for having us on. I appreciate you. And thank you for watching. Until next time, stay safe, everyone.